right, wonderful. So we are back here with our next panel uh, where we are exploring here, hosted by the Eco Channel and the movie studio. We made a quick pivot from hosting at the University of Miami, and we are now here engaging in yet another interesting discussion with our next panel where we are talking about green initiatives. And I have my esteemed panel members here. I have Greg Branch, and he is the managing director of the Eco Channel. Greg, could you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself, a brief introduction, if you will? Yeah, sure. Um, I have spent 25 years in uh, financial markets. Uh, I've worked for Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and executive director at UBS. I now own my own financial firm, Veritas Financial. I'm also, uh, in my spare time, I guess, uh, a contributor to four CNBC shows, two on Fox Business News, and Bloomberg TV as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And also here I have David. Uh, David Kelly is professor of economics at University of Miami. Would you go ahead and tell us a little bit about your, your experience and your history? Sure, great to be here. So yeah, I've been a professor at University of Miami for 22 years now. So I study environmental economics, which means things like how to design environmental regulations so it's very cheap for firms to comply with. I study resilience, adaptation, climate change policy, and my latest venture is sustainable business, where I run the master's in sustainable business at University of Miami. Yes, and our conversations with University of Miami have been just really dynamic because University of Miami is really progressive in this area, and I feel proud to you know, be in the city of Miami and, of course, Coral Gables. Uh, so I'm Kristen Schwachter. I am the founder of The Rewired Mind, and I'm here leading this discussion because really it's about change, it's about transformation, and it's about creating solutions. And that is what I do through mindset work and working with the brain. Um, so let's just get started here with some overview. I, in our discussions, I learned a new term. It, the term is ESG. I can both of you dive into that a little bit and give us some foundational information on what that is? Professor, where are you? Okay, I'll go first. So ESG is a system of investing where you know traditional investing considers risk and return. With ESG investing, you're going to consider also the firm's environmental performance, their social performance, and their governance performance. Okay, so you might be interested in saying, okay, I don't want to invest in companies that have poor environmental records, like oil companies or something like that. Or you might be have a more positive focus where you say you want to invest in things like green technologies, like uh, new batteries and stuff like that, uh, so that your investment dollars are used by these companies in a sustainable way. Mm, very good. Did you want to add anything to that? Any? No, no. I, I think Professor Dave covered it covered it really well. Um, you know, I would just add the implication for the public markets has been really that the suppliers of capital are driving the influx or the demand for ESG investments. And so, you know, when you survey professional investors, forty percent of them will say that the primary driver is actually investors, not necessarily the. Um, meaning those who supply the capital to the investment firm, not the investors themselves. And so what is refreshing is that the epiphany is occurring on the ground level, mm. not necessarily in the trading room. Mm. Would you agree with that, Professor? Oh, yeah, I would totally agree. There's um, uh, some studies I've seen that say, you know, an investment person who comes in to, the, to get advice about where to invest a lot of times they've never heard of ESG, and um, it really has to be, you know, they have to be educated by an investment professional to actually learn about it. And uh, so, so I would agree that most of the d demand for ESG investing has come from, you know, large fund managers and, and stuff like this who are very interested in that, and then they're drawing the investors in who get excited about it. Is that a new terminology? How far back does this, this acronym go, if you had to guesstimate? Yeah, I don't, I don't think we have to guesstimate. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the first funds, uh, the first properly labeled ESG funds, and by the way, there's now over 700 mutual funds and over almost 100 ETFs, uh, but they started to spring up almost 20 years ago. Right now, it didn't become part of our public conscious until probably 2009, 2010. Would that be fair? Uh, yeah, so I totally agree. So it's been around for 20 years. 
but it's really the last 10 years and even the last three or four years that it's really started to take off. Mm -hmm. And right. so now, something like 25% of all funds invested have some ESG component to them. And, you know, like I said, it's been around for a long time, but it was nowhere near that, that level. Going, going to 30%, a third of all AUM is projected to be somehow connected to ESG companies uh, in the year 2025, where we're anticipated it will reach over 50 trillion.